Hello and welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm Sherry Duckworth and joining me today is Mr. Arthur Porter. He is co-founder of Dallas Designing Dreams. Thank you so much for coming and talking with us today, Mr. Porter. Well, Sherry, thank you for having me. It's always fun to talk to people about um, their dreams and entrepreneurship for young people. And it just kind of gives you a sense of, um, of hope and looking to the future. Right. So I think it's a wonderful thing that you all are doing uh, with Designing Dreams. Can you tell us, give us some background on it and, and how it got started and what your goals are? Well, Dallas Designing Dream got started seven years ago. God came to me and said to leave your job. And so I left my job and I thought it was to make money but he really showed me that it was to serve other people. So I knew nothing about starting a nonprofit, so we started a nonprofit, and the whole idea was, was to help youth. And now it, it have turned into where now we're working with young people with autism, uh, we work with cancer survivors, and we're getting ready to start a program to where we'll start working with veterans that was in the Iraq and Af Afghanistan war. Oh, wow. What a wonderful um, nonprofit that you have and um, the groups that you're reaching. It just touches my heart uh, that there's a group of people out there that care enough that would do this and take the time to do this with uh, these different groups that are out there. Um, for young people today, it's so important that they know that somebody is there for them and right. advocates for them, um, no matter what groups, right. you know, that they're coming from. How important... I guess, or how severe would you say uh, the peer pressure on society today is affecting our young people? Well, peer pressure is, is, is one of those things that's it's been around since Adam and Eve. That's what I always tell people. It's true. And it will be around with us as long as we live because no matter what age we are, we still have to deal with peer pressure. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our young people, they have to deal with technology because... Technology says that, you know, you have to look like this, be like this, act like this. So what happened is that our young people, they don't understand who they are. Mm. So we try to help them to understand that they are an original. I like that, that they're an original. Yes. Um, because you're right, they do have so many different influences right now. And with social media mm -hmm. and the Internet being so easily accessible, the images that they see and they come across, not only are they getting peer pressure, obviously from their actual peers at school and, you know, wherever they um, socialize, but they're getting it from their peers that are their same age or maybe older that they're looking at, looking up to um, in, you know, celebrity world right, right. as well. And it's just, it's not a realistic perspective. Right, right. So I think it's great that to look at them and say, you're an original. Right. You know, what a great, um, what a great way of looking at things. When you visit schools and talk to them about careers and college, usually what insight would you say that you walk away with? Well, I, I walk away with seeing that a lot of our young people, they give up in a very early age. Hmm. Because what happened is that we will go into, let's say, grade school, and we will ask the kids, what is it that you want to do when you grow up? And everybody's hand will raise. And then as we go into the middle school and we ask, what do you want to do when you come out of school? Well, then you may get three or four hands. So what happened is that their self-esteem start to, to lower at, at a very young age because they don't really believe that they're going to go to college because no one around them, as far as family members, have gone to college. And they don't even believe that they're going to have a career. So they, they really start to give up at a very young age. It's heartbreaking to hear that they're giving up at such a young age. It is so exciting when you talk to a young child and they're so excited right, about right. life and you know what they want to be when they grow up right. and it changes every five minutes right, you know right, right. Um, what happens to where it that switch flips and they become I guess despondent well you know one of the things that we will do is we try to catch them as, as young as possible because what happened is that once we start showing them that there is possibilities we show them that you can do something, you can create something, you can make something. And so once we, we show them this, then they start seeing these possibilities, and then they start to see, you know what, I can do something, but they also need that support. So as a parent, let's say we have a child in the house that loves art or loves mm -hmm. to make things or design things. How can we encourage them to make them 
maybe a young entrepreneur, if you will. <laughs> you know, one of the things that we see this all the time, parents will come in with their child and they may be six or seven, they say, oh, she loves to, to design things or he loves to draw. And one thing we try to encourage them to do is support it. Yes. You know, we had a parent came in and she said, you know, my son, he wanted to just keep drawing on the wall. Oh. I said, you know what? what? What you should do is, is, is get a piece of sheetrock and attach it to the wall and tell him this is his area and just let him draw. Because what happened is that we have these dreams when we are kids and, and either we would take those dreams away or others would take those dreams away. And when we lose those dreams, life starts to just kind of pile things on us. You know, we have to live, we have to make money. It's like an onion. And so what happened is that we would get to be 30, 40 years old and we'll start saying, you know, I remember when I used to, I used to like. And so our dreams can be taken. And, and so if parents would just work with their kids and just support those dreams. I love that, support those dreams. Um... At what age do, do you all at Designing Dreams start to encourage that entrepreneurship spirit in young people? Well, we, 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 we have a young entrepreneur program. So we start with them at nine years old. But we will work with them at a much younger age if we see that, that they have this interest in a business. Now, we have worked with them as young as two years old. Oh, my, that is young. <laughs> and, and people say, well, what can a two-year-old do? Well, what we did was that we had the two-year-olds on up to eight years old to come in and to do their artwork. And after they had their collection, we had an art show. And the whole idea behind the art show was that when someone purchased their artwork, the money was put in the kid's hand so they know what it feels like to sell something that they create. So in that way, by the time they're 12, 13 years old, it's, it's more difficult for someone to try to get them to do something that they shouldn't do to earn money when they can say, you know what, I've been making money since I was three years old. I love that. It encourages to uh, be able to make money in a very positive way. Exactly, exactly. And I love that. And doing what they like and what exactly. they enjoy. Um, how important is that to make sure that they're doing something that they love and enjoy, you know, for them to be able to take that into their future. Well, to me, now what made us do that was that, you know, years ago, we used to go into a store and someone, the owner would have a, a dollar bill in a frame. Yes. And, and we hang it on the wall and they would say, that's my first dollar bill. But I never understood that. So when I was like seven, I made money stacking soda pop bottles. I made like 50 cents. And I remember skipping home and so proud that I had made that money. So that's why we, we started the, the art program for the kids, because once they get that feeling, you know, of making money in an honest way, that will continue on with them. That will continue with them. I love hearing about kids who, you know, they, I love driving through the neighborhood and seeing the lemonade stand. Or, right, right. You know, having kids drop off flyers that they've started a lawn right, mowing business. Right, yeah. um, what... How do you encourage them to um, be responsible with their resources as well? You know, because it's so tempting for them. They get that first dollar bill, you know, or they get the first five or 10 or 20. Right, and right. the first thing they think of is, what do I want to go right, buy? Right. Well, one thing we do with our youth, we talk to them about reinvesting. They have to reinvest into their business. So what happened is that when, they, when they're part of our program, when they make their products, when it sell, well, they get 75% and 25% have to go back into the program. Oh. And so we'll, we'll tell them, you know what, you can get 100% if you invest in your own supplies. I said, this is just like a bank. We invested into you, so you have to pay us back. Oh, this is fantastic. I mean, what a wonderful way for them to grow up thinking about money. Right. You know, it's just, it's so balanced and so responsible. They're making their own. Right. They're learning the percentage to put in, right. to put out, right. to save. I think it's an incredible program that you have for these young people. What has been your response um, from the community for, with, with what you're doing? Well, it's, very, it's been very positive. And, and, you know, we've never had to advertise because people tell other people. And we never know who will walk through the door, when they will walk through the door, and who they will bring. And, and so it, it has really been great because as a, as a small nonprofit, to be able to make the impact that, that we are making 
it's, it's, it's really been amazing for us. It is really amazing. How can people um, get involved? How can they get their child involved? If, if they're watching today and they think, oh, this sounds like something that I would love to, to get involved in or have my child participate in. Well, they can go to our website, which is www.dallasdesigningdreams.org, or they can give us a call at 214-421-9900. Now, one of the things that we ask parents to do is to bring, bring the child. So in that way, we can talk with the child. You know, because the parents, a lot of times, they want their ch- child to do something, but the child may not want to do it. So we always like to talk with the child. If we see that excitement, we will say, come on in. Right. The excitement has to come from the child, exactly. not mom and dad, exactly. um, because mom and dad aren't running the business. Right. It's right. the child that exactly. has to do the exactly. work. Exactly. So exactly. they have to be motivated to right. do it themselves. And, and believe it or not, most young people want to be able to, to learn and to be able to make their own money because as human beings, we understand that having money allows us to do things. So we're going to find a way or try to find a way to make money. So it may as well be in a way that they can control their destiny. What is the age limit? You know, there is no age limit. We, That's good. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, we're working with people now that are in their 70s. That's fabulous. Yeah, so youth, I mean, we, we work with them from, from kids to youth to young adults to senior citizens. So every stage of life, you're helping people exactly. um, really pursue their dreams and their passions right. and what they love to do. I think it's really exciting when we hear about young people doing it because then they end up being that 70-year-old who's still pursuing exactly. their passion at that season of their life. So how does that influence the young people? Does that, do they get to work together? Or is there a mentorship program here? Well, what we call it, we call it a, a village. You know, when I was a kid, we used to say it takes a village to raise a child. Well, we call it a village, so we have the young people working with the, with the elders, and what happened is that they're both inspired by each other. I love that. So the young people, they're saying, oh, I'm doing something that they're doing. And the elders are saying, oh, if they can do it, I can do it. Yeah. So it's a two-way inspiration. That's fantastic. I think it's so great. It's great to hear that, you know, young people are able to inspire the older and the older are able to inspire the younger and everyone's just working together and it's very full circle. How have you seen this affect um, attitudes of the young people, um, especially those who may be more predisposed to, let's say, being involved in unsavory activities, crime, for example? How has this helped um, kind of change their perspective on things? You know, we, we can't reach them all, but we, we do try. And, and which my son, one of, one of my sons, went to prison at the age of 18. And he spent 20 years in prison. So that was 20 years of his life just wasted. And so what we do is that when we get a young person in, and, and, and normally it's the grandmother that's bringing them in or the mother, and, and they come in with this attitude like, you know, I don't want to do nothing. You, why you have me here? And I'll tell them the story about my son. And I'll tell them, I said, you know, what happened is that you can end up doing the wrong thing and end up in prison for the rest of your life, mm-hmm. you know. And that, that is real because now they're, they're sending kids to prison at 12 years old. So you're not too young to go, you know. That's right. So we try to, for those that, that we see that these are the things we need to talk to them about, we, we talk to them about that. Absolutely. Because the earlier that we can, we can reach them, the better off that we will be and they will be. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much, Mr. Porter, for coming today. Thank you for sharing with us your story and uh, even your son's story, you know, because I think that he he teaches a great lesson to those young people. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you're doing for the community. Thank you for having me, Sherry. And thank you all today for watching Join Our Town.